Yes, welcome along to episode 15 of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365 with David Jennings and Gavin Lynch. Just four weeks to go to the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. Yes, we're on the countdown. And Gavin, I have exclusive news for Up in the Ante. Very good. How do you know you've made it in life? Don't know. Is there a way of kind of I wish knowing? I knew. Well, I think we've made it. I okay. think we've officially made it here on. on Up in the Ante because there is going to be a horse named after us. It's not going to be called David and Gavin. <laughs> but it's going to be called Up in the Ante. Oh, good. There's going to be a horse named after this very show. Got a call from Garrod O'Loughlin during the week, an up-and-coming trainer in County Mead, the trainer of Cedarwood Road. Yeah. And he said, I've got a lovely horse at home. He thinks the world of it. It's a brother to Sizing Cole. He said, we were trying to come up with, the, with a name for this horse. And he says, we love this show, <laughs> Up in the Ante, so much that we called it Up in the Very Ante. Very good. We'll have to go and watch him. We certainly will. I wonder if we get to pick the colours. Doubt it. Probably not. Probably but not. Up in the Ante viewers, watch out. For up in the ante, potentially in 2020, maybe Sounds 2021. Good. Something to look forward to. How's your week? Uh, Grant, uh, punting wise, bit of a roller coaster. Uh, you just showed me the questions from the crowd there, so we're going to chat about that in a couple of minutes. So. Okay, so stay tuned to hear about Gavin Lynch's roller coaster punting week. Yep. And Gavin, it's a big week, not as regards punting or racing, but as regards romance. Why? What's that? Valentine's Day on Friday, 14th it, of February. It is not. Tell me, and you. I know, I, I knew you. Yeah, no, You're on your last that. chance. Yeah, no, you know the way I messed up with the anniversary. I made it up with the fridge with the light. Just about, yeah. Uh, just about. Uh, so I'm all organised this week. Are all you? sorted, yeah. I don't believe yeah. you. I'm all proud booked. of you. Table booked, 7 o'clock Friday. Table booked, 7 o'clock yeah, Friday? Yeah, there's only one problem. Go on. She's brutal at snooker. <laughs> I'm going to have to give her 40 points lead in every frame. <laughs> that is absolutely brutal. <laughs> Please tell me you've something booked. Yeah, restaurant booked in Dublin, Peplos in Dublin. Beautiful. Yeah, and you? Uh, nothing quite yet, but Come hopefully on. today could change. Well, you can't be slagging me now for a change. Yeah, Peplos is very, very nice. Enjoy that and tell Anne-Marie I said hello. Will do. But it's time to get on with the show. So as always here on Up in the Ante, we're going to kick off with our questions from the crowd. And the first question this week comes from Simon Lilly on YouTube. And it's a question for me, Gavin. Okay. Simon wants to know, if you had to pick between Itchy Feet and Mr. Fisher in the Marsh Chase, who would you go with? Now, this is a tough one, Gavin. It's That's very not, tough. It's not for you. It's a bit like having the pick between Rachel McAdams and Margot Robbie. Once they don't have itchy feet. Once, once they don't have itchy feet. Right? It's Rachel McAdams and Margot Robbie. And I'll tell you why, right? I've always loved Mr. Fisher. You did? I've always you like, tipped him, I tipped last him up for yeah. last year's Supreme. And I've always loved Rachel McAdams. Okay. Ever since I saw the no notebook, fell in love with Rachel McAdams. Okay. So Rachel McAdams is Mr. Fisher. Right. But Margot Robbie, just in the last is she year. She's the new one. Just since I saw <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street. She's just, she's the number one. That would be Itchy Feet. Okay. And just right at this present time, I think Itchy Feet is just, just does it for yeah, me. Yeah, two good horses. Um, they're obviously, what are they, second and third favourite for the, for the March. Mm. So, uh, official ratings, Itchy Feet is 155 now over fences, having won the, the grade one in Sandown. And uh, Mr. Fisher, 153. I would love if Mr. Fisher went for the Arkle and Itchy Feet went for the March. Don't think so. Okay, well, hopefully. And the second part of Simon's question is, with Jack Kennedy being out injured, Gavin, who is going to pick up the ride on Delta Work? A uh, tricky question, and I had to guess I'd say Mark Walsh. Can he's, I guess? He's, he's written a few for Giggins in the last month or two, so I'd say him. Uh, I think this is a straightforward one. Okay. I think it'll be Davy Russell. Really? I do. I think you'll see a different jockey in presenting Percy. Wow. Why? Yeah. So I just think when he looks at it, Delta Work has got a better chance of winning the Gold Cup. He probably does, yeah. presenting Percy does. And you just wonder, if he doesn't ride Delta Work, would that hamper his chances of riding Abercadabras, of riding all the gig and send horses, mm. the embarrassment of riches that they have in various yeah, races? maybe. Like, he could even ride Samco in the Marsh Chase. If he doesn't, I think, then Mark Walsh, how's that? Okay. Yeah. So it's either going to be Davy Russell or But it's uh, sad Walsh. on Jack, obviously. It's, it's unfortunate. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a high note. Did you say that's the fourth time to break his leg? Fourth time to break his leg. My and God. I rang him through the story about his broken leg. And you know what he said? He goes... I feel so lucky. And I said, how can you feel lucky? You broke your leg again. You're out of Cheltenham. He goes, if it had have happened an hour earlier, he wouldn't have won the Irish Gold yeah. Cup. Just goes to show you the mentality of these jockeys. Right, another question from the crowd. And this one comes in from Paul Clark on Twitter. And this is a really interesting one, Gavin. Yes. So he's obviously a big fan of yours, Paul. Is Gavin, you're obviously a very successful punter. I think we're all going to agree with that. And I worship your opinion. So he worships your opinion. But how do you cope with losing runs and is there a secret to getting over them? Uh, there's no particular secret. Maybe uh, personally, uh, I just think the fundamental thing, the most important thing is to keep a diary 
and a spreadsheet I keep both so for example last week I had four losing days in a row which is obviously the worst run we're only into this year six weeks that was the worst run of the year and then I because I, I keep records I look back on it and um, Aspire Tower let me down for a good few quid in leopard sounds that's why I lost that day uh, during the week on Thursday I did some uh, multiples in Thurless with Sempo uh, Ante and also Charles Burns in the bumper so that was unlucky that could have been a good day but it turned into a bad day uh, so after the four days, last four days in a row, uh, you have to just try and keep your head. Don't change things too much. And thankfully, I won money on Saturday. So uh, down a few quid for February, but winning something small for the year. And you don't change your system. It stays you the same. You can change. Don't start changing to back in 20 to 1 shots or back in horses that you don't know much about. Or maybe back in, I don't back much in England uh, or back in football matches. Just keep the head. But I think if you keep your diary, you actually might do better than you think. But I think anybody who's betting six or eight bets a week or more, you have to keep a diary. So as we always say here on Up in the Ante, gamble responsibly. Only gamble what you can afford to lose. So the next question comes in from Baby Seal on Twitter, Gavin. A nice, Good name, yeah. nice name. Now that Willie Mullins has lost two ch champion hurdle contenders, should he now put his best hurdler, Benny Dejou, into the race? I don't think so. Uh, Willie said after Goran Park when she was wicked impressive that she's a three miler. And he was kind of debating at that stage between the, the stairs or maybe the mayor's hurdle. Um, but now talk about her on the champion I don't think it would suit her uh, like the day she won an ace over two miles over fences she wasn't impressive at all um, and I think that comparisons with Annie Power is a bit silly Annie Power ran over three miles once and didn't stay in the stairs when she was second um, so I don't think that's a fair comparison I think Annie Power was a two two and a half miler I think she's two and a half three miler okay so we think she's going to go for the mare's hurdle mm. do, if she didn't run that race do you think she'd have a better chance in the champion hurdle or a better chance in the stairs better chance in the stairs yeah, and the other thing by the way is that I wouldn't give up totally about Honeysuckle not running the champion uh, Kenny Alexander last week gave a quote saying probably the mares and then at the, the weekend he gave another quote saying maybe because a couple of hearts came out that it's 50-50 so I still think there's a small chance she go there yeah I think so I think it's about 50-50 Honeysuckle going for the champion hurdle and our final question this week comes from Paul Carty on Facebook and Gavin, Paul watches the show from Boston, Massachusetts. Good. We're going all over the world, so we are. Would either of you agree with me on two forgotten horses for the Cheltenham Festival, Super Sunday in the Champion Hurdle, and the Storyteller for the Pretemps Final? And he wants to say hello to his mammy and daddy in Kilulta, Athenroy. So he's a Galway man. Kiltulla, okay. I think it is. Kiltulla, is I it? I think so. Okay. Anyway, Athenroy. You know your Galway. Athenroy will do better. You're, you're, you're married to a Western woman, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So there you go. Hello to Mammy and Daddy in Athenroy. So first of all, Gavin, um, Super Sunday, probably one's further than two miles, but it's a bad champion hurdle, and you know he's going to stay on up the hill. Yeah, look, at, I'd be worried about his age, uh, first of all. Uh, only one horse in the last 67 years has won the champion hurdle age 10 or more, and that was Sea Pigeon. So the stats are against him. Uh, he won the Carl Cup. He's ran in two stairs hurdles. He's 10. He ran very well in the Irish champion first run back. I could see him staying on to be third or fourth. He but ran I, okay. He didn't run yeah. very well. I'd say. Well, I'd say, like, you wouldn't say Jessica's horses are flying, so it probably could improve six or eight pound. But I just think I wouldn't back to win the race, no. No, I think it'll be placed. It could be. Stay on into third. Yeah. Do a new one, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the storyteller, who hasn't been forgotten on Up in the Ante, because it was tipped up a few weeks ago by myself, before it ran, finished sixth at Leprosen over Christmas, I think he's got a cracking chance. Yeah, sure, Davey did the same thing that he did last year. Uh, with Sire de Berle, mm -hmm. finished sixth both times. Uh, the one thing that worried me a little bit is that uh, its chase rating is 158, I think, hurdle rating 142. The English handicapper doesn't like to see that big of a difference. So I'd say he could end up getting a rating of something like 150. Mm -hmm. So just to allow for that. Yeah. But definitely has a good chance, yeah. Yeah, and he's got a touch of class. He does. So, Gavin, that was this week's questions from the crowd. So now, open the anti viewers, it is time for the week that was. Yes, this is Gavin Lynch's turn to talk about what has happened in the last week. So what horses have impressed you this week, Gavin? Uh, we're actually going to start on Sunday of last week for oh, the first time. can we do that? We can, yeah. Okay. Because uh, this, this uh, performance didn't appear on any radar. I only just happened to see it during the week. Uh, we're starting in Po. Po? Yeah, in France. Easy's oh. land uh, last Sunday week. When we were on Leprosone, he was busy. Uh, he won by three lengths. He's now 7-2 for the cross country. So just to tell you, he ran since when he won a challenge. So what are we going to do? The fortnight that was? Is that what we're going to call it? Or? No, no, no. The eight okay. days that was. Okay, the eight days that was. Can he beat Tiger Roll? Uh, we'll get a better idea this Sunday in Navan in the Boyne Hurdle. I wouldn't think so, but he was still very impressive. Okay, and Bob by J.P. Manus. Yeah, he was. Yeah, very interesting. Johnny, he's uh, alive and well and winning. Okay, so uh, moving on to the week that was. Yes, uh, Tuesday in Market Raisin, uh, a horse uh, called Mac Fabulous. 
Uh, he was a great, great uh, bumper winner in Aintree. Uh, he got beaten first time, the first two runs over hurdles. He won very easy the other day. Uh, I could see him maybe going for a Martin Pipe oh, or something. I love him. Yeah. I love him. So he's 20 to 1 in places for Martin Pipe. Uh, we're on to Thursday in Huntingdon when the buzz horse at the moment is Shishkin. 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 So uh, he ran over two mile three and a half, which is a funny prep maybe for the Supreme. Mm. Uh, but again, he bolted up. He travelled very strong. He was a bit keen. He jumped quite well, quick and clear. And uh, he's now 11 to 4 for the Supreme. I think it's actually the Supreme has come alive in the last couple of weeks. I think 11 to 4 is probably a bit short. Is he Altier in disguise? I don't know. Uh, he hasn't done it at grade one level yet, so that's the question. He looks like Altier. He races like Altier. He quickens like Altier. And he seems to jump like Altier. And the other thing is that uh, Nicky Henderson, uh, fair play to him, uh, said no hesitation the Supreme. Mm. By the way, is Nicky Henderson the nicest man in race? And he seems to be. Every time I see him being interviewed, he's always in good form. Great man, he? yeah. And he's, like, and he's very 70. articulate. Very good at speaking. Yeah, yeah. He's brilliant. Fantastic yeah. man. Uh, on, to, uh, on Thursday as well in Thurless, a horse called Sempo who's now 20 to 1 for the Albert Bartle with Bet365. He won a maiden hurdle by six and a half lengths, jumped well, travelled very well. He had been third over two mile, he'd been second over two and a half, this was 2-6. Uh, you have to remember he was sixth in last year's champion bumper. Has an engine this horse? Now. Yeah, it's a good horse, so... I just could... jumping is a little bit of a concern, it was a bit high to it. Yeah, he, I thought he jumped fine. Um, he made most of the running. He was only beaten less than eight lengths in the champion bumper, so mm. I wouldn't discount him. No, certainly not. Uh, Friday in Kempton, a gorgeous horse called Flinter Sacra. Now, he's not going to go to Cheltenham, so I just to tell people don't back him for Cheltenham, that he might go to Aintree. It was he's, glorious to watch. Yeah, he's gorgeous. Uh, he's a full brother to Sprinter Sacra, as yeah. we all know. So, yeah. uh, Friday in Bangor, uh, a horse called Bob and Cole. Oh, good old Davy Maxwell. Davy Maxwell didn't get the leg cramps this time. No cramps. And, uh, he's in the gym all week. It was a four-runner race. One pulled up, one fell. He basically finished alone. <laughs> but he's a horse. If ever a race fell apart, yeah. this was, it was just a case of staying on. He's roughly fourth favourite of the Fox Hunters. He's 14 to 1. Now, the horse has won five races in France. He's only had the two runs for Paul Nichols, so we actually don't know how good he is. I think he's a bit underrated. He possibly is. He's definitely the Maxwell number one for that race, I'd imagine. I'd say it is. Yeah. Uh, then on to Saturday, uh, we have a few to mention. In Newbury, it was a great day's race in Newbury. Yeah, I really enjoy it. The yeah. first one is uh, Chantry House. Uh, he's now three from three, including his bumper. The time wasn't quick. Uh, he's got a rating of 140, which I think is is, yeah. is definitely workable. He's I tens. like him. I don't love him. I would like him a lot, yeah. I think he's good. Uh, okay. 10 to 1 for the Supreme, 8 for the Ballymore. Uh, Nicky didn't say which race he'd go for. Yeah, he doesn't know. Uh, 1 for the team, won a handicap by 14 lengths off 130. The reason I mention him is that he had been third in a pretense qualifier at Warwick, which means he's qualified. I don't know what he got for that. I'm sure he'll get 10 pounds. So he's 12 to 1 for the pretense. Bolted him. Yeah, he couldn't want an easier. And then, as uh, Eminem would say, guess who's back? Altior. Um, that was nice, Gav. Yeah. He, um, his jump, and he was too high at the first down the back straight, <clears throat> he jumped very well. Then three out and two out, he was a bit high and a bit slow. But just this little turbo that he has after the last is amazing, isn't yeah, it? Uh, yeah, it is. It's amazing. But it's, it's turbo to beat So Royal and Dynamite well, Dollars. I, I could see him, if you ran is him in a beginner's chase in Tremor, he'd probably do the same thing, do you know? He, he's now 20 from 20 uh, for two mile to two, two and a quarter. The only time we got beat, we know he was beaten over two five in Ascot. Okay, answer me this then, okay? Mm. Tough question now. Yeah. It's a tough question. If everything goes well for every horse in the race, so if Shaq and Persuas, Defi Desai and Altier all jump well and no excuses for any of them, give me the one, two, three. I don't know. No, no, you have to no, answer. No, I'm not. I'm not no, giving Gavin, you, no, you have to answer. No, you're cornering me at this stuff every week, and I don't know. I'm not but giving just, you an answer. Just for the purpose I've of the show. I've backed Shaq and Persuas. So that's one. And I kind of wish I didn't know at this stage, because it's too hard. The best two-mile chase I ever saw was the Tingle Creek. Do you remember Moscow Flyer? I do. Is there two? Up and Well Chief. Yes. I think this could be better. Okay, so give me a one, two, three. Come oh. on. Shaq and Persuas, one. Yeah, Altior, two. Alt and, and Defi Desai, three. I don't know. You, you've just washed your hands It's the Defi best Desai. race at the festival, isn't okay. it? Well, I, I'm going to give you the one, two, three. Go on. Defi Desai. No. Shaq and Persuas, Altior. The one thing is, if Altior is within two lengths at the last. I don't know, though, Gav. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. These are better horses than score The last thing I'd say is that no, no expert, don't listen to anybody in the next month saying that such thing can't win it of those three. They all could win it, yeah. couldn't they? Oh, of course they could, yeah. yeah so. But it's a Fantastic game of opinions, race. Gavin. It is. And you think Defi Desai have finished third. Altiori's won there this the last four years. Three weeks ago, you were telling everybody he was the second come, and now he can yeah. only finish third in the champion chase. Yeah, it's amazing. Turn, it's a great race. Turn coat. They're all over 170 odds, so they're, they're class acts. Uh, Altior is 2 to 1 with Bet365, the champion chase. Onto Native River, uh, he's 10 years old. He beat Secret Investor by 2 and 3 quarter lengths. He's had a far better preparation this year than last year. He went to the King George last year. This year, he won in Aintree and he won the other day. Um, he is now 10 to 1 for the Gold Cup. 
he's going to make the running. Uh, he won the race two years ago. Last year, I think he was beaten maybe nine lengths. Um, ground. If it turns ground. into a bog, he'll be a single yeah. figure so price. So it was a bog. I was there that the day, the day he won the Gold Cup and it was soft, heavy in places. If it was that again, he'd run a good race. If it's good to soft, he probably he's, just... He's, he's super sunned in the champion hurdle as Native River in the Gold Cup. I think he finished third or fourth. I heard Tizzy been in after, uh, interviewed afterwards. He was talking with Tizzy. The, Tizzy, yeah, Colin Tizzy. Uh, for the entry Grand National, I think he's got a massive chance in that race. I think he's 16s and 20s. Uh, the weights are coming out today, aren't they? Um, I think he's a huge chance in entry. That's the race I'd be interested in for. Okay. Uh, last race to mention on Saturday in Newbury was Ocean Wind, uh, bolted up with a bumper by mm. eight lengths. It's only a four-year-old. It's 16 to one for the champion bumper. Uh, also on Saturday in Warwick, Rouge Viff uh, won the Kingmaker by seven lengths. Lovely horse. Nice horse, yeah. The one thing, if you look back through his form, was fourth to put the kettle on and also second at Global Citizen. Probably not just good enough. Well, I'm not sure Cheltenham is his track. I think he's a flat track horse. Maybe. Because at Cheltenham that day, I fancied him. Mm -hmm. It was a good race. Al Dancer was in there. And I just didn't think he got up the hill. I think he's more of a flat track horse. I think he could win the grade one at Aintree. Yeah, probably a good shout. Okay. Uh, also on Saturday in Nace, uh, we're going to talk about Armax for a moment. Uh, your horse that you've tipped up at a good price for the Boodles. Okay. <clears throat> this, is, this is obviously, I'm a fan of the horse, okay? Yeah. But I cannot understand why he's not 5-1 to one favour for the Boodles. Why? Well, Answer you don't that. know his rating yet. He's no. right 134 no, now. I know he up seven. Yeah, yeah, I know he ended up seven, but you don't know his English rating yet. Yeah. I think he has the potential to be a 150 horse. Maybe. The one thing is he's had two runs in France, which is always a, an advantage. He won a race in France. Uh, he was very bad at Christmas. He improved a lot to Ferrios and he improved a lot again. Fitness, so. fitness, fitness. Yeah. He's going to be fitter. He's going to be better at Chelsea. So he could improve Jumps again. well. He stays. Oh, this horse oozes. Yeah. I think he'd have a chance in the triumph. Uh, he probably would. He's 8-1 to favourite for the Boodles. That's probably good value, but it depends on the rate he gets. Up in the anti-viewers would have backed him at 14-1, to one, Gavin. They would. Uh, the one thing about the Boodles is we don't know the ratings until very, very late on. Yeah. You can't even get an idea as you go along. Uh, a couple of things to point out. Uh, unfortunately, a few horses missing Cheltenham. Uh, Marie's Rock is out, mm, which is a pity. Sickening, yeah. uh, Classical Dream is out, Sally out, and Duvan is out. Uh, and also Tracy Zenis Gorthy decided they're going to keep him mm. at home. He's not going to the pretemps. We've mentioned Jack Kennedy. Panic Attack was sold to David Pipe from Willie Mullins, but they still are going to target um, the Cheltenham bumper. So that's the week that was. That's it. Yep. Very well done. That was the week that was. Now, every week on Up in the Ante, we focus in on one of the big races at the Cheltenham Festival. And this week, it's a belter. Yes, we're going to have a look at the Ballymore Novices Hurdle. And what a race we have in store. Your current 11 to 10 favourite is Envoy Allen. Then it's 7 to 1 Asteria for Lange, 8 to 1 Time Hill, 8 to 1 Chantry House, 10 to 1 The Big Getaway, 10 to 1 The Big Breakaway, 14 to 1 Fiddler on the Roof. 16 to 1 Sporting John and 20 to 1 Bar. First things first, Gavin. Mm. What a race. Brilliant race. Brilliant. Uh, I was thinking a few weeks ago that the novice hurdlers were a bit like the novice chasers, that there wasn't that much quality, but I just went through it there yesterday. Can I grab your attention for a minute? You certainly I can. I think they're actually the best crop of novice hurdlers I think I've seen in a long time. I can't wow. remember. I'm going to give you 15. I'm going to give you a rugby team. And I'm going to give you three subs. Oh. I think these could all be horses that could be 150 horses. Wow. So, so these 15 yeah, I think and three subs, 18 horses, yeah. could end up could in be. rated higher than 150. I think so. Okay, go for it. Envoy Allen. Yes. Asterian for Lange. Yeah. See, do you agree? Okay. Asterian for Lange. Time Hill. Chantry House. The mm. Big Getaway. Yeah. The Big Breakaway. Yeah. Fiddle on the Roof. Yeah. Sporting John. Mm. And then back to the two-miler, some of them Shishkin. Abacadabras. Captain Guinness. Andy Dufresne, Master Debonair, Latest Exhibition, up to the stairs now, uh, Latest Exhibition, Monkfish. That's 15, right? Okay. And I haven't included Lord Royal, who's due to run this week, Sempo and Harry Senior. Mm. So it's what a, a crop. savage crop. Really good. The only one of those I wouldn't just be okay. entirely sure about. Two, okay. and they're two JPs, Chantry House. I just want to see it again. I like him, yeah. Okay. And Sporting John has to go. I couldn't believe he was favoured for that race at Exeter that was called off. I didn't think he deserved to be. I'd like to see him. Those two, I, I need to see more. And there's a lot of those that are unbeaten over hurdles. Yeah, So <clears throat> in the next month or two, we're going to see a lot of uh, reputations. So tarnished. do you think this could be the best Ballymore we've seen? I think a lot of them are going to dodge Envoy Allen, to be honest. Really? Envoy Allen. Uh, I think that Asterian for Lange might go for the Supreme. Time Hill might go for the Bartlett. Chantry House, don't know. He could even go for a handicap. Uh, the big getaway will go here. The big breakaway, don't know. Fiddler on the roof, maybe the Supreme. Sporting John might line up or maybe go for a handicap. So I don't know. I'd say a lot of them are going to dodge end violin. You've got some stats. Yes. So this is a great race for punters, thankfully. Uh, the first thing to say is that Ireland has won eight out of the last 12 and Willie has won four of them. 
Including the, included in those eight, Sam Crow. Yeah. Sam Crow won the Ballymore. I know you won't believe it, viewers. Sam Crow won at Cheltenham and he won the Ballymore. Tell me this. It's probably an unfair question. Can you name the four winners Willie had of the Ballymore? Okay. You can, you can think okay. about it. I'll do the stats. Okay, you do the yeah. stats and I come. So, four winners of Ballymore since when? In the last 12 years. In the last 12 years, okay. So, second point to make is that only once of those 12 has the winner been uh, bigger than 8 to 1. Struggling here. <laughs> Go on. So, you listen. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> so, uh, 11 of the 12 winners were 8 to 1 or less. Lots of favourites, lots of second favourites, so it's a good race. Uh, all 12 winners were aged 5 or 6, and the last 6 winners were aged 6. Oh, Tammy, there's uh, a few more. <laughs> <laughs> only two of uh, the 12 winners that had previously ran at Cheltenham, which I suppose is normal because the novices and the Irish novices mightn't have been to Cheltenham. Uh, 11 of the 12 winners that ran between 2-3 and 2-5, so don't be back in a horse that ran over 2 mile and might stay, such as a Steering for Lange or Chantry House. Uh, 10 of the 12 winners were rated 146 or higher, and that probably explains why it's good for punters. And 8 out of the Keep 12 going. winners had won a graded level already. So you want something high in the betting, a good rating, has won over the trip, is Irish trained, is age five or six, and has won a graded race. And that shouts to me, Envoy LN. This is embarrassing. This is stage fright. This is proper <laughs> stage fright. This is like being on a first date. Well, and you I, know when you have to try and... I'll give you, I'll give you a clue. One of them won a... I, no, uh, I, have, I have one of them. Week. I have one of them. Okay, I have two. I actually have two. Go on. I have two. Fahin. Yeah. Sorry, no, I have one. Fahin. Okay, give me another clue for another one. Uh, the other fella ended up winning um, the Marsh Chase, as it's called now, the following year. And he had to go left-handed. Graham Wiley. Don't be looking. Oh, um, oh, this is terrible. Jesus. Can I tell you? Go on. York Hill. Yes, well done. York Hill. And then the other two are uh, 11 and 12 years ago, so that's unfair. Uh, one of them, it was only his second run over hurdles, I think, from memory. Five for three, do you remember him? Five for three, I do remember Grey Horse, yeah. And do you remember Mickey D? Mikhail Dagene. Oh, stop, I should have got that. Yeah, yeah he anyway. was. I thought, at the time, I thought he was like the best horse yeah, I've no, ever he, seen. Yeah, he was a gorgeous horse, yeah. That was embarrassing. Uh, what do you fancy for the Ballymore? Um, I fancy, <clears throat> at the prices yeah. of Bet365, there is far too much of a gap between Envoy LN and mm -hmm. Time Hill. I just worry with Envoy LN. He hasn't really come off the bridle, whereas Time Hill has had to get down and dirty to win uh, his race. Uh, Envoy LN did in the Cheltenham bumper because Blue Sari came up on his outside. Yeah. And, and and maybe you could say the same about the Royal Bond. He had to get after him as well. Did. But I just think Time Hill is just so hardy. And I think if, if we know he's going for the race, I don't think he'd be 8-1. to one. Yeah, would you say he's 50-50 to go for the Bartlett? I don't think Philip Hobbs wants to go for the Bartlett at all. I think this would be definitely the race he's going for only for Envoy LN. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see what way he yeah. goes in. Yeah, I think Envoy LN uh, will win if tipped him up. Um, as regards the danger, I don't know what I'd go for. So if all these run in the, in the market, so Envoy LN, Asteria for Lounge, Time Hill, Chantry House, the big getaway, the big breakaway, Fiddler and Roof, Sporting John, I know it won't happen. No. But just for the purpose of the show, and you can't chicken out this one. Okay. If they all run, who is the value? Uh, I'd say Fiddler on the Roof is the value, but I think he's going to go for the Supreme, so it's a contradiction. Okay. But uh, 14 to 1 him, he looks a savage horse, yeah. Okay. And I think he needs a trip as well. Yeah, yeah, he's a lovely horse, Fiddler yeah. on the Roof. And for me, it would be Time Hill. So now it's time to find out what's happening this week, and this is probably the last week of real Cheltenham clues, where we've got horses that are going to be running. They're probably going to be having their last runs before Cheltenham, and the big race is the Betfair Ascot Chase, 3:35 at Ascot on Saturday, and it could be a corker because we've got surname against Riders on the Storm, an up-and-coming horse against a horse yes. that just loves Ascot. It's basically like watching Liverpool playing at Anfield. I just think <laughs> surname. It's it's his home turf. Uh, right hand as we all know he's better it's his trip it's his ground the ground's soft at the moment in Ascot he's odds on he should win yeah I, I, to be honest I don't like the horse I think he's overrated do you but this is this is him yeah he's still the this only is... horse to beat Altior and I think he's 15 pound clear in rating so he oh, should win I would say he was as fit as he would be for a race at Cheltenham that day against Altior I'd say it took them a while to get over it you mm -hmm. know that uh, it was a tough race that day because it was built up as this match mm -hmm. from, from the summertime almost yeah it was so, Ali and uh, Fraser yeah it was are, are we both agreeing though that he'll probably win this surname yep yeah, okay. Two votes for surname, but he's very, very short. Also, on Saturday at Ascot, earlier on in the card, we've got the Reynolds Town Novice Chase. I'm a big fan of Sam Brown here. Loved the way he jumped at Linkfield. Thought he did really well to win at Haydock when he mm. made a mistake down the back straight. Like, we haven't seen him that much. But if the ground is soft, I think it'll suit him. Yeah, I just would love one of these to go and bolt up. I'd love to see Pim, who won very well the last day. Copperhead came through handicap, and Sam Brown, as you say, in Haydock the last day was good. Uh, two for gold, looks more of a stare, Danny Wisbank. I'd just love to see uh, Pim Copperhead or Sam Brown go and win by 15 lengths and blow open the RSA. <laughs> the 
The RSA is never going to be open. <laughs> when you see what Champ does at Kelso, you'll be blown away. A tens on. Yeah. Champ, Champ, that, that anyway, RSA just, is I don't see one of them win easy just to kind of yeah. give us something to think about. We've also got the Kingwell hurdle at Wincanton. We could see Fusil Raffles and a couple of others. Master Debonair has entered. Anything you like here? Uh, not particularly, but we'll have to see. Does Fusil Raffles come back to what he was? Disappointing horse, isn't he? Yeah, he is. But he did win there earlier on in the season. And we've got the legendary Tiger Roll. Yes, yes the pint size pocket rocket could be back in action in the Labrox Point Hurdle uh, at Navin on Sunday. A race he won so impressively last year under Keith Dunhu. Can he do it again? Yeah, I wouldn't say he win, but we thought the same last year. Last year, the, the talk was that he wasn't fit. This was only a stepping stone. And he absolutely bolted in. Mm. He beat off you go, if you remember. And, and also on Sunday, you have the 10-up novice chase at grade two. Saturday in Goran Park. You have a grade three and a grade two, the two red mills, the hurdle and the chase. Okay. So of all the things happening in the next five days, what are you looking forward to most? Definitely Tiger Roll, yeah. Tiger Roll. I'd say there'll be a big crowd in Avon to see him. There certainly will. Yeah. Get to Navin. So just in case you've missed any of our previous Up and Yanti shows, we're going to give you a sneak peek at our selection so far. Whole host of selections, Gavin. Some good, some bad. Obviously your list. You've got some rock solid contenders. Yeah, in there. some good ones. Uh, the mayor's hurdle is not doing me many favours this year and last year. I've picked two so far, and the both they're the two that are gone. I was devastated for you because Marie's Rock at that stage, just before coming out, had looked one of the bankers of the meet. Yeah, because Bar Hurdle, there's nothing jumping mm. off the page, is there? So, mm. um, but yeah, sure, there's some good ones. So we'll see. And I had only one runner in the last week, and it was Aramax who was tipped up a 14 to 1 a couple of weeks ago on the show. Now 7 to 1 favourite with Bet365 for the Boodles Juvenile Handicap Hurdle. Gavin, I was impressed. I liked that performance. Yeah, yeah. It'll be just interesting to see what rating he gets. But yeah, it definitely should be favourite, yeah. Yeah. So we're getting to the nitty gritty. It's this stage, Gavin, where you're just praying that your horses don't get injured. Yeah, even when the WhatsApp dings, you're kind of going, is it one yeah. of the lads about racing? When I get a message now from Gavin Lynch, it's a horse getting injured. Because last week it was, uh-oh, Honey, well, Honeysuckle is going to go for the champion hurdle yeah. at that stage, we thought. And then, bing, bing, Marie's rock yeah. out, and my heart I, went out to you. I have two or three pals that are on Twitter, and uh, yeah, they, I'd say they enjoy sending me tweets. Why is Gavin okay. Lynch not on Twitter? I just, this is the question I get asked constantly on Twitter. Why is Gavin not on Twitter? Is there any chance we can get you on social media? I'm too old. You're not too old, Gavin. <laughs> so you're only 57 years old. Yeah, I know, yeah. Um, any chance? I wouldn't think so. If Up in the Ante is a success this year... And if the lovely people at Bet365 want to happen again next year, can you we'll promise see. me we'll, we'll talk get you on Twitter it. for next year? We'll talk about it. Please. Yeah. Please, okay. We'll I'll see. talk to you nicely. We'll okay, so that was a quick look at our anti-post selection so far. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is the moment you've been waiting for. It is time for our latest installment of anti-post picks for the 2020 Chetlam Festival. How many do you have this week? One. One? Just one. Okay, I have two. So you can pick two next week and I'll pick one, okay? Okay, because yeah. okay, we have to keep it even. Okay. It's competition, Gavin. It's not, no. Okay, so my first selection this week is in the race we've spoken about already. It's the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. Unfortunately, Marie's Rock is out of the race, but I think that has blown it wide open. And the one I'm going to pick is Santa Rosa from the Dermot McLaughlin stable. We've only seen Santa Rosa once over hurdles. I thought it was a beautiful run at Fairy House. Thought she just blew up, turning for home, and then stayed on again. And she was hitting that line hard, Gavin. She was. Exit pole won the race. There was a well 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 regarded horse of Willie Mullins is in second and I just thought Santa Rosa showed plenty jumped quite well travel well light campaign so far which might mm. actually suit for Chetland was supposed to run a ferry house on Wednesday unfortunately that meeting was called off is entered in Navin at the weekend could go there if the ground isn't really deep and this Santa Rosa Gavin if you look back through her bumper form she won her first two bumpers she won the, during the Dublin Racing Festival. She went to Aintree. She was a leading fancy. She ran against the Geldings at yeah, Aintree. She, she very finished well. third to McFabulous. Traded really short and running under Finney Maguire. Just didn't quite get home. She was a bit weak. But behind her that, there, that day was the likes of Master Debonair. And I think that form is really solid. And at 25 to 1 with Bet365, I am convinced that Santa Rosa is a forgotten horse in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. And my second selection, Gavin, this week, unbelievably, mm -hmm. ran in the same race as Santa Rosa at Aintree. It is McFabulous, a great name for a horse. I think this McFabulous has been brilliantly campaigned by Paul Nichols. You think it was intentional? No. I, do, I just think it's, it's, it's a gradual process. Yeah. I think they've, they know they've got a really good horse in their hands, okay? I'm tipping them up at 18 to one to win any race to Chetland Festival. You could opt for your 20 to one to win the Martin Pipe, but I just wonder, is there a chance he might go for the Coral Cup? He started off the campaign as one of the leading fancies for the Supreme and the Ballymore. 
He was a little bit disappointing on his hurling debut at Chepstow, and then he was really poor at Ascot. But they gave him time to get over that, and I loved his performance last Tuesday at Market Raisin. Loved the way he jumped, he attacked his hurdles, he landed running, and I thought he won that very, very, very impressively. There was a Nicky Henderson horse who had won his last two starts, way, well, well, well beaten back in third. And I think Mac Fabulous, who's got a mark of 132. Yes, Gavin. 132 sounds low, yeah. 132. It sounds ridiculously I'd say low. he's definitely got a better chance of getting into the Martin Pipe. He would have been in last year. The previous couple of years would have been very tight. So I'd say the Martin Pipe more so than the Carl yeah. Cup. Now, there is one word that I'm really worried about, and that's I like the way you're thinking, who is favoured for the Martin Pipe. Looks to have plenty in hand. But I think Mac Fabulous, I think he could end up being a grade one chaser. And if he's a grade one chaser... He'd want to be winning handicaps off a mark of 132. So my sele second selection this week is Mac Fabulous to win any race at the 2020 Chetland Festival at 18 to 1. So Santa Rosa and Mac Fabulous. What have we got for us this week, Gavin? Uh, and go for Tina Turner. Tina Turner? Yeah, Simply the Bets. Oh, Simply the Bets. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember the song? You do. I do. Uh, I remember so well. So Simply the Bets is a novice. It's a seven-year-old. Uh, it's now rated 149. So it can't go for what was the Close Brothers. It's now called the Northern Trust Novice Handicap. And I have a question for you. Is he better than all the rest? He hopefully will be. Okay. <laughs> well done. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, so he can't run in uh, the Northern Trust, or what was the Close Brothers. Is that cause, good? Because that's not 145. So he's off 149. He wasn't much for Hurdler, really. Uh, he reappeared after nearly a year off, and he went straight into a novice handicap in Chepstow, and he won very easy off uh, 125. He ran nine days later, uh, and he won easily again off 132. Now, he ran on uh, the 26th of December, St. Stephen's Day or Boxing Day at Kempton. And from the very, very start, if you look at the video, he hated going right-handed. He hated the track, hated going right-handed. He was jumping to his left, he was jumping badly. I just cannot believe the horse must be a very honest horse that uh, he ended up finishing second. He was well beat, uh, but he finished a half a length ahead of on the slopes. He came back to Cheltenham uh, on the 25th of January, going left-handed on the 25th of January, and he won uh, by a length and a half from Imperial Aura, who's now one of the favorites for the other novice that I mentioned, the Northern Trust. And uh, on the slopes was 12 and a half lengths behind. So he had, that shows that he's better going left-handed because he finished 12 lengths ahead of it. Uh, last week, uh, last Thursday on the slopes, won by five lengths at Kempton. So I think the form is rock solid. Uh, if Imperial Aura runs a big race on the Tuesday, I'd see this fella going off a lot shorter. He's 16 to one at the minute. Uh, I think it's an advantage being a novice. Being highly rated in that race is not a disadvantage. As you saw last year, the first and second were highly rated. So uh, for me, simply the bets in the brown advisory plate 16 to 1 16 to 1 it's hanging on every word you say there <laughs> good man <laughs> i can't think of any more lines that's enough show. that's enough <laughs> okay simply the bets for gavin 16 to 1 to win the close brothers no to no, win, to the win brown, sorry the brown advisory yeah, yeah. and stable plate maribel something well worse to that effect okay yeah. there you go 16 to 1. gavin that was really well thought out okay i thought you made a really good point and I'm actually starting to fancy that horse now just because of what you said in the last minute. Yeah, I think he has to go left-handed. He's won over the course and distance the last day. Didn't handle Kempton. He's only had four runs over fence. He's a novice. He's improving. So, yeah, I think he's got a good chance. You've convinced me. Has he convinced you? That's Gavin's latest selection for the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. So, folks, that's it for episode 15 of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365. I've been David Jennings. He's been Gavin Lynch. And next week when you join us, there'll only be three weeks to go.